Hey again there Photoshop beginners and I'm going to show you a very quick tutorial here on understanding the very basics of layer masks. The key thing to remember when you are learning about layer masks is the term white will reveal, black will conceal and all shades of grey. Don't forget that. <laughs> Okay guys, here we are in Photoshop and over here on my right hand side we have our layers palette. On my bottom layer here I've got my background layer. I then have created a just a square with a rectangle tool by holding down the shift key and I've made a square. Then I've duplicated that and I've made another one on top so it directly overlaps. So now we're going to go through and as you can see here whatever I've got, when I've turned this layer on the orange has blocked out the white and now if I turn this layer on this plum colour has blocked out the orange which is blocking out the white. So this is the reason why we need layer masks is whatever's on top reigns supreme over what's below. I can change the opacity here but that doesn't really offer me any refinement. So this is why we're going to use layer masks. So if I select the top layer and I click on the new mask icon down the bottom here, if I just click that, it's going to load in a white mask. Now the term white will reveal, black will conceal and all shades of grey. So this is 100% white, revealing the top layer at 100%, that's why I can't see anything below. Now if I deleted that and I held down the Alt key and clicked on the new mask icon, it now loads in a black mask. So that black is 100% black. So that's concealing the top layer at 100% and that's why I can't see that top box there of that plum colour. It's gone. So if I hold down and I hit Command key and I hit I, I invert the mask and I turn it back to white. Now if I come over and I hit B for my brush tool, my foreground colour is black. If I click on the mask and I now paint through, if I hold the Alt key down, I can view my mask and I've just painted a black line straight through. And that's the reason why white will reveal, black will conceal. I'm concealing the top layer using black and it's revealing the bottom layer. Now the reason why I've got this feathered look here is in my brush tool my hardness is set to zero so I've got a feather on it. If I open this up a little bit more, there it is. It's just giving me that it's just giving me that look there. Now if I still click on that mask and I hit Command I and I invert it now, you're going to watch the yellow turn purple and the purple is going to turn yellow because it's now revealing different parts of the photo. Okay, so now if I come in and I now select white as my foreground layer, if I paint through here, I'm now revealing my top layer again. Because I haven't done it fully, we're getting this look through. If I can just paint straight on the mask and I can paint all that out, because I'm painting at 100% opacity, if I hold the Alt key and click on my mask again, I'm back to having my plum square. So that's how your layer mask work. White will reveal, black will conceal and all shades of grey. So when you're putting, when you're creating your own luminosity masks later on, you're using that for exposure blending and you're going to be creating far more complicated masks. So to give you a bit more of an example, let's turn over to this image here. I've, I've made a basic luminosity mask on this image. There is my mask there. White will reveal, black will conceal, and all shades of grey. So if I'm just applying this curve here, this curve, as you can see, the histogram sitting on the right, it's going to apply more brightness 
for the highlights than it is the shadows. Now if I click on that mask and I hit Command I and I invert it, it's now applying that mask, that curve, to more of the shadow areas instead of the highlights. So in our basic application here, you can see how masks work by using just real block colors like black, white, and a very transitional gray. But then when you look at an image like this, you can see how complex your masks are going to end up becoming with this sort of tonal range of white reveal, black hair will conceal, and then if you want to do further adjustments, you can come in into your levels and you can ref start to refine your masks to what you want to be revealed and what you want to be concealed, especially when you're going to have other images here that are going to have a different brightness value that you want to blend. So if I wanted to have, I might have another photo here that was taken extremely underexposed because I wanted to paint in more detail through here. And I'll be using a luminosity mask using the same principles as this example here, but I'll just be creating a much more complex mask than that one. So you've got that mask and then you have that mask. But if you understand the concept of this, then you'll understand the concept of this and then your photography will take another massive step up in professional quality of blending your images together. Okay, so that's your basics of layer masks. To see masks put into real effect, I want to put some links below where you can find out and watch more tutorials on how to create your own saturation and vibrancy masks. Also, the fantastic luminosity masks that you're going to need to learn and apply to your own images if you want to master exposure blending.